My name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GRE. We have been solving GRE math problems out of this book here, the official guide to the revised GRE, the second edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. We are so we have finished solving almost all the math problem from it. If there is any math problem at all that gives you trouble, you will find a solution to it from day number 251 through 400. From 251 through 400. This book happens to contain almost exactly the same problems, all of them, and appearing on almost exactly the same page numbers as the ones that appeared in the first edition of the revised GRE. We are, we are finished doing all the problems from this book. We did finish doing all the problems all the problems from this book. If you are interested in watching any of the original solutions to the problems, you will find the original solutions from day number 1 through 250. Day 1 through 250, original problems tend to be a little lengthier, they tend to be a little bit more in depth. Right now, we are in the process of solving some quantitative comparison questions. Quantitative comparison questions are a very important part of the exam, they are still a big chunk of the exam. Unfortunately, the revised GRE books that I just showed you do not provide us enough practice problems. To get some more practice, to get some additional practice, we started solving problems out of this book here, the 10th edition of the general GRE. We are right now on page number 279. We began this process on day number 401. Let's turn to page number 400, uh, or rather 279. We are on problem number 6. Problem number 6. No matter how simple the problem may be, no matter how straightforward the problem may seem to you, always pause the video immediately after I set it up, solve the problem yourself and then compare your work against the work that we do together. Do you understand? Because many a times you will find that you will end up doing a lot of unnecessary works. Every precious second that you waste doing the unnecessary work is one second less that you have for other problems. Obviously, I'm not pointing out the bloody obvious. I know that. But anyway, number six. 76% of the people, 76% of the people who took the exam had no trouble with it, three quarters of the people were fine. We're given a triangle here, we're given a triangle, we are told that this angle is 5x degrees, this angle is 3x degrees, this angle is 4x degrees. The question is which one is bigger, column A, first which is x, and column B, which is 20. Go ahead and do it yourself. Well, it's very straightforward. 3x plus 5x is 8x, 8x plus 4x is 12x, so 12x is the sum of the angles, which has to be 180, which has to equal 180. And therefore, x is going to be 180 divided by 12. Let's find out how many 12s are in 180. Shall we? 18, 18 has how many 12s? 18 has one 12. 18 has one 12. The remaining 6 goes and joins the 0 becomes 60. And 60 has how many 12? 60 has 5 12s. 12 5s are 60. There you go. Which means x equals, which means x equals 15. And since we're comparing it with 20, the answer is B. Answer is B. Another way, another way we could have solved this problem, another way we could have very very easily solved, uh, very quickly solved the problem is that once we had this equation here. Once we have this equation here, 12x, 12x equals 180, if we, substitute, if we substitute 20 for it, because that's what appears in this column, you see? That's what appears, 20 appears in this column. If we substitute 20 in here, we can immediately see that 20 times 12 is more than 180. It's way more than 180. That tells you that x, whatever the hell it is, is less than 20. x has to be less than 20. I should have done it that way, it didn't occur to me, because after all these questions are called quantitative comparison. We are supposed to compare the two quantities, not compute them. We ended up computing everything. I am ashamed of myself. Number seven. Number seven. Always remember, quantitative comparison, which is why we write down the word computation, and we cross it out for emphasis. To remind ourselves that it is all about comparison, not computation. 74% of the people had no trouble with number 7, 3 quarters of the people. Root 8 over root 2 versus root 12 over 
Rule 3. We give it two seconds to pause and unpause the video. Here we go. Root 12, root 8 over root 2 can be written as root 8 over 2. It can be written as 8 over 2. And root 8 over 2 can be written as root 4, which of course is 2. Similarly, root 12 over 3 can be written as can be written as square root of 12 divided by 3, which is square root of 4, which of course is 2. The answer is C. The answer is C. That's all. Do you want to see another method? Even though it's a very simple problem, and you might wonder, what the hell? What what can what what possible there? What what could what could what could be the possible other method? You want to see it? No, I'll show it to you. Another method, more straightforward method, is to simply cross multiply. Multiply this column by root three. Multiply this column by root two. And when we do that, we get eight times three, which is square root of twenty-four, and two times twelve, which is square root of twenty-four. They're equal. Number eight. Number eight. Number eight, question number forty-four. Oh sorry, question number eight. Only forty-four percent of the people had the luck with it, about more than half the people missed it. It's a geometry question. We're being asked to compare in column A, we have a quantity A, and in column B, we have a quantity B. And here's the picture. We have a line that goes like this through the origin, and this is point T. Let's not draw it so low. It's too low. There is no reason for us to go that low. There is a point P, which we are told has the coordinates of negative 6 and negative 5. And here's point Q. It ends at point Q, which has coordinates of A and B. That's the picture that is given to us, and we're being asked to compare A versus B. I'll give you five seconds to pause the video, do the problem yourself, and then unpause it, and, and then we'll compare the work together, okay? Okay, here we go. Well, the most straightforward way to figure out what A and B might be is to figure out the slope of this line here and let's use this point, let's call this point O here using 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 points or rather instead of saying using points let's let's call let's say going from going from P to O if we go from P to O if we if you measure the slope slope is equal to slope is equal to the change in y over the change in x. Now, remember we were going from p to o, p to o. So, change in y is going to be negative five minus zero, negative five minus minus zero. So this one is just zero zero, and then change in x is going to be negative six, negative six minus zero. As you can see, it's just negative five over negative six. So slope is negative five over negative six, which is same as five over six which is same as 5 over 6. Now let's find out the slope from O to Q. Going from, going from O to Q, if we go from O to Q, let's measure the slope. The slope equals the change in Y over the change in X. Now remember, our starting point now is O and we're going to Q. So change in Y is going to be 0 minus b, 0 minus b over 0 for x here, 0 minus a, 0 minus a, which is minus a, which is, which is minus b over minus a, which is minus b over minus a, which is just b over a, which is just b over a. But of course we realize that all of these three points lie on the same line. P, O, and Q follow for, fall on the same line. So of course, the slope go, slope that we found that go, going from P to O would have to be the same slope as the one that goes from O to Q. These two quantities have to be equal. So what we just found is that this quantity here has to equal this quantity. That tells us this implies that five over six has to equal B over A. 
So there you go. Our B, our B is equal to 5, and our A is equal to 6. Our B is equal to 5, and our A is equal to 6, and therefore A is bigger. The answer is A. The answer is A. That's all. The reason why more than half the people missed it is because they are being lazy. Just, 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 just looked at, they just looked at negative 6 and negative 5 and therefore saying, well, that's your A and that's your B. If A is negative 6 and B is negative 5. You can't do that. And they end up saying that negative 6 is less than negative 5. This is how we do it. We have to figure out the slope. And whatever the slope happens to be going from P to O would have to be the same exact slope as the one that, uh, that, uh, that we find going from O to Q. Of course, they all fall on the same line. This is the next one, number 9. Question number nine. Question number nine. Question number nine, when it was given in the exam, the percentile was 56%. A little over half the people got it right. We are told that 3x equals 4y. We are also told that x times y does not equal 0. We are told that the product of x and y does not equal 0. And here is what we are being asked to compare. So ratio of, ratio of, let's do it here, ratio of x to y, ratio of x to y, this is our column A, versus column B, which is the ratio of y to x. Ratio of x to y versus the ratio of y to x. Let's see what we can do. But they tell us that the product, for, product of x times y is not equal to 0, that's fine, that's, that's, that's good to know. What, what can we do here? It's right here, the answer is staring right in our face. Let's bring the y down here and bring the 3 over there. We divide both sides by y, so the y drops out, and then divide both sides by 3, so the 3 drops out. And here we go, x over y, x over y equals 4 third, 4 third. x over y equals 4 third. And that's your ratio. ratio. Ratio of x to y is 4 over 3. Ratio of x to y is this ratio right here, x to y, which is 4 over 3. Ratio of y to x y to x is going to be the reciprocal. If this is 4 over 3, this is going to be 3 over 4. 3 over 4 is less than 1, 4 over 3 is more than 1, the answer is A. The answer is A. Let's do number 10, shall we? Number 10. I made my cup of tea and then I forgot it. I left it behind in the kitchen. Uh, and now I'm stuck without my tea. It's right there on the counter, waiting for me. Number six, number ten. In case you're wondering what I was staring at at the end of each problem, instinctively uh, my eyes turn to the place where I keep my cup here on the table, and it's not there. Number ten. About half the people had no trouble with it. Here's the question. It's a geometry question. This is x degree we are told, and this is we are told is 180 minus x degree. 180 minus x degree. What we are being asked to compare, what we are being asked to compare is x versus 180 minus x. Column A, column B. One more time, the picture, I am giving you the picture exactly the way it appears in the exam without any changes at all. This is all they tell us. This is x degree they tell us. This is 180 minus x degree. We have a straight line and then that's been, this shows up like this. x and 180 minus x. I'll give you two seconds to pause and unpause the video. Do it yourself. Okay, here we go. What's going on here, again one more time, is that people take liberties. The reason why more than half the people miss this question is because they take liberties. You mustn't take liberties. You must always keep in mind that unlike the good old days, many, 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 many moons ago when you took the SAT, all the pictures on the SATs are drawn to scale. All the pictures. Unless they tell you otherwise. If the picture on the SAT is not drawn to scale, it has a caption underneath it which says not drawn to scale. 
the GRE is the exact opposite. It is the exact opposite. All pictures are not drawn to scale. You have to assume that the pictures that they give you are not drawn to scale. Unless in the rare instance where they actually tell you that the, hey, this picture is drawn to scale. Otherwise, the pictures are not drawn to scale. We cannot assume that this is 90 degrees. It looks like a 90 degrees, but unless we have this symbol, unless they tell us, this is their way of telling us, unless they tell us that this is 90 degrees, we cannot assume it. They did not tell us that that symbol is not there. That symbol is not there, therefore we cannot take liberties. So if, if x happens to be 90, we do not know that. If x happens to be 90, if, if x happens to be 90, then the answer will be C. If, If x happens to be equal to 90, then 180 minus 90, in which case the answer would be C. We don't know. Maybe x is maybe x is 89 degrees. Maybe x is 89 degrees. We can't tell by looking at it with our eyes. So maybe x is 89.99999 degrees. Who the hell knows? Maybe it's 89.5 a degree, 89 and a half degrees. Or maybe it's 87 degrees. Who knows? We can't tell just by looking at it. So if x happens to be less than 90, in which case this is x is less than 90, 180 minus 180 minus something less than 90, it's going to be something more than 90, you get the idea, in which case the answer would be B. If x happens to be, if x happens to be more than 90, the answer would be A. We do not know, we cannot tell just by looking at it, just, we cannot just stare at the bloody thing and say, well x is 90, it looks like 90, we can't, we, uh, that will be silly thing to do, that will be a damn silly thing to do in the exam, to sit there and say, well it looks like it. It ain't, a beauty, it ain't a beauty contest, do you understand? I'll see you tomorrow. You can't go by the looks, that's what I meant. It ain't a beauty contest. Why not?